shows are often loud. And the problem with that is that we don't actually know how loud they are. People are bad at measuring volume objectively using their ear. That's why we need to measure sound pressure level, or SPL. And Open Sound Meter is an app that lets you do just that. So in this video, we'll take a look at why you should measure, the equipment that you need to get started measuring SPL, and we'll walk through actually setting up and how I might do it in Open Sound Meter. You can also use Open Sound Meter for tuning PA systems and measuring the EQ response. If you're interested in that, then I've got a free PA checkpoint chart that you can use, and it just outlines the eight different points in the room where you need to measure to sort of fully tune your PA system. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. But without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so why measure SPL, right? First of all, let's talk about the words, right? SPL, volume, loudness, all sort of different words meaning the same thing. The difference is that SPL is an objective measure of volume, whereas the words volume, loudness, etc., whether I say it's loud or not, that is a subjective measure. I can decide whether I think it's loud or not. However, I cannot decide whether it is 100 decibels or not. That's a fact. So for example, I could be at a concert, having a nice time, I'm really high energy, I'm enjoying myself, and I think that the sound level is completely reasonable. However, the microphone says otherwise, it might be well over 100 dB, and I am damaging my hearing severely by being in that environment. The opposite is also true. I might think that I am mixing a band nice and high, but I'm actually just tired, I've been listening to too much music, my energy is low, and in reality, what I experience as loud is only 90 decibels when the band's expecting it to be. 95, 98, something like that. So why should you measure it? Well, of course, link to that, consistency. If you're working for an artist, or really anyone, right, you wanna be able to deliver a similar experience wherever you go. You wanna be able to go into the show and say like, this show runs at 98 decibels. That's the volume of the show, give or take, plus or minus some moments. The second reason you might measure it is for legal requirements. There are places in the world that require you to keep the level underneath a certain SPL limit. And if you go over that, they can impose pretty hefty fines on you. So you might choose to bring your measurement rig with you to make sure that you are not exceeding that. Of course, the previous point, consistency, is linked to that because if you know that your show runs at about 98 decibels, then when someone says to you, the limit is 100, you can say, that's fine, I usually run at about 98, so that shouldn't be a problem, with a certain degree of confidence. You also might know if they say it's 95, you'd be like, oh, that's gonna be difficult, and you might have to change your plan. Third reason you wanna measure is protection for yourself and for the audience. You don't wanna damage your hearing, you need it to make a living if you're a sound engineer, and you don't wanna damage the hearing of the audience either, because well, it's, it's our responsibility as sound engineers. We are like responsible for other people's health and we need to make sure that they're not going away deaf from our concerts. A quick note on the legality of using your own system to measure SPL. If you're gonna try and use your measurements to back up some kind of legal argument, then what you need is a closed system. By that, I mean you need a system that you cannot tamper with once you have started it recording once you set it in motion. So the system I'm going to show you now is no good for that because we have a gain dial. And if you can reach and turn the gain dial during the show, mess up your measurement, it's not gonna hold up in court if someone's suing you. Okay, moving on, equipment that you need to take measurements with Open Sound Meter. You need, of course, a computer running Open Sound Meter. That is pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure we all have that, so say no more fam, we're moving on. Next up, you need a microphone. You need a measurement microphone, something just like this, but certainly not this microphone, I wouldn't recommend it. But you need a measurement microphone, and SM57 isn't going to cut it. You also need an audio interface to connect your microphone to your computer. That should be pretty self-explanatory, we'll talk about it in a moment. And the last thing you need is a calibrator, because we need to know that the data we're getting in is data that we can trust. But let's go into detail here. What about the microphone, right? We need to prevent that microphone from clipping. And you might think, Easy peasy, I never clip my microphones. I am a saint of live sound. And I say to you, these microphones need to be able to handle up to 140 decibels of SPL. And certain microphones, like this Sonarworks microphone, do not do that. So if a sound happens that is louder than 140 dB SPL, then you're gonna clip the microphone internally before you even reach the electronics of the microphone, you'll overload the capsule. Or maybe it's the electronics, I'm not entirely sure. It's in the microphone anyway. I'm not a microphone engineer. You might be thinking to yourself, Come on, homie, I don't mix 140 dB SPL. I only mix it like a hundred. And I say to you, what weighting are we talking about here? Is that A weighted? 
even if you are measuring a weighted fast using some kind of portable measurement device, it's still taking that measurement over a certain amount of milliseconds and the peaks over performance can easily get up to 140 decibels, but only instantaneously. Still gonna clip your microphone, still need to avoid it. So this bad boy needs to go up to 140 decibels SPL in its maximum SPL limit. Next up, we need to prevent our interface from clipping. Again, you're thinking, my brother, I got this. I don't ever clip my inputs. I get that gain right down. But what if I told you that the voltage that a microphone generates at 140 decibels can be high enough to clip your mic input, even with the gain at zero? It's all down to the sensitivity of your microphone and the sensitivity of the input of your audio interface. So we need to check out and make sure these two are incompatible. We need to find the sensitivity of our microphone and we need to find the maximum input level of our audio interface. Just check the manual, it will be in there somewhere. So we need to do some rough maths here, which I stole from a Rational Acoustics webinar. I'll link it down below if you want all the details. We need to find the sensitivity of our microphone. It will be in Pascals. We need to take that number and multiply it by 200 to give us ish the voltage in millivolts at 140 dB SPL. We then need to take that number and divide it by a thousand to get it in volts. That's the correct maths, right? Someone let me know in the comments if I got that maths right. So once we got this number in volts, right, we need to check the manual for our audio interface. We're gonna look for the maximum input level. It might be in dBU or something like that. I think that's quite common. So just use ChatGPT or the internet or something to convert your volts to dBU and then find out if your microphone is going to overload the input of your audio interface, even though the gain is at zero. If it is, then you need either a less sensitive microphone or you need an audio interface that can handle a higher voltage. A major problem I had was I was using this Sonarworks microphone with Focusrite Scarlett, second gen or something, first gen maybe, and it just, both of them were not compatible um, and I ended up just destroying everything, so that was terrible, don't do that. Right, the last thing that I talked about was this calibrator, right? So let's talk about why we need that. When we open up Open Sound Meter, it's gonna give us some kind of SPL reading, but it actually has no idea what level the volume it's hearing is, right? The fan is whirring in my laptop right now, but it doesn't know whether that fan is 60 dB or 80 dB or whatever it is. So we need a trusted source that's going to generate a noise at a specific decibel level that has been tested and vetted and calibrated. That's one of these guys. So there's a little button on the side here that turns it on, and then I can toggle between 94 dB and 114 dB. What happens? is I put this microphone into the calibrator and turn it on. And now the microphone fits snugly in this little hole here and it is hearing the signal, which is one kilohertz generated at 94 decibels. All of this is measured and calibrated so that when this microphone is in here and we're using this device, it is hearing 94 decibels and we can trust that. That's great. You need to make sure that the microphone fits snugly. Again, this one does not, terrible example. And you also might need an adapter if you have a microphone with a smaller capsule. I think the iSemcom ones have smaller capsules, like eighth of an inch. Oh, last thing about the uh, this guy is that sometimes they're toggleable between 94 decibels and 114. We need 94 for open sound meter because it doesn't have an option for another amount. Let's open up open sound meter and get everything set up then. I'm going to connect my microphone up to my audio interface. And I'm assuming that you know how to do this, so I'm not going to explain that. I'm gonna connect it up, and then I'm gonna set the gain down nice and low. I'm gonna turn my gain down to zero. Right, open sound meter is open. It's gonna open up looking like this. We'll have a spectrum measurement, that kind of thing. What we want to do, first of all, is make sure that we have input, okay? So I've got my fan and power turned on. Go to my measurement and I go to the audio device down here. So we click on measurement on the right hand side here and the settings for it open up down the bottom. I click down the bottom right here where it says analog one and two, focus rate. And I'm gonna click focus rate USB ASIO because that's the audio device I'm using. This one here, it says M. I'm gonna change that to input one. That's what was on already because I've connected my microphone into input one. So you can see at the top right here that I have input appearing on the channel. That's good. That is my microphone registering sound. So it's measuring something, fantastic. If this has been helpful so far, I would love it if you could subscribe to the channel. I've got other videos on SPL and on tuning systems using Open Sound Meter. Now we need to calibrate this microphone, don't we? I'm gonna get my microphone, I'm gonna get my calibrator, I'm gonna put the microphone in the calibrator, I'm gonna turn it on and you'll see the signal appear in Open Sound Meter. 
Obviously when I talk, it's gonna affect that. So I need to be nice and quiet. And I'm gonna go down here and there's a button that says 94. It says apply estimated gain for 94 dB SPL. I will click that. What that's done now is it has told Open Sound Meter that the voltage level, the input level that it sees just now, that's 94 dB. We're done with this guy now, we can turn it off. So now the microphone is calibrated, let's set up the viewing. I click up the top right here where it says spectrum and I'm gonna change it to numeric. And that's gonna show me multiple different SPL readings at once. You can see down here that I am speaking and apparently I'm speaking at about 85 decibels. That seems, seems high, doesn't it? Something's not right here. <laughs> If we want to check it, we take this guy, we turn it on, and then we put it on our microphone, it should show 94 dB. It's showing 95, that's a bit weird. I'm gonna go and double check that again. I'll click on the measurement. There we go. So let's talk about what we're looking at here, right? RMS, SPL, A, slow, right? What's A weighting? A weighting is just a sort of EQ curve that we apply to the measurement to give us a dB reading that we relate to more as humans. It's actually just a weighting curve that we apply that makes us, gives the data more relevance to us when we're thinking about hearing damage, basically. I don't find RMS uh, particularly useful, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this guy and I'm gonna change the RMS reading to an LEQ reading, right? LEQ. I'm still gonna select A weighting because that is what causes hearing damage, that's what I care about right now. And I'm gonna select one minute as the integration time. So this is what we would call LAEQ1. What that means is that we are taking the average value over the one minute, right? So it's like a rolling value as time progresses, you know, it forgets the older information and accounts for the new information. But for the last 60 seconds, it is showing me the average SPL A weighted value. So that's pretty neat. That shows me pretty much in the short term, how loud things are. So I might want to configure the three of these to show me LAEQ and different numerical amounts, right? So I could change this one to LAEQ and change it to five minutes. And then I could change this last one to be LAEQ for 15 minutes. You can actually add more of these windows here to see more of it, right? Because what we've got, meters rows, meters columns. So I could do five or even better, you know, I could do three to We'll do five of these in a row, right? And what we'll do for this one, we'll do 30 minutes. And we'll do, the last one can stay at like 60, right? What's up? Why are we not showing? Yeah, we need, to, we need to click on this. So if it's not showing anything, we need to click on the window pane that we see. And down the bottom left here, we need to show the source. We can reset all of these by clicking this reset button there. It'll set everything back to normal. Or rather, I guess we have to click on each individual one and press reset if we want to reset that value. And we can also set a warning threshold over here in the corner. And that just means like, at what point will it turn red? So if I set it to 70 dB, you'll see this one on the left-hand side turn red. Or maybe it won't. How interesting. Uh, again, this is configurable for each input. So if I click the left here and I set this to 70 dB, it'll show red. When I talk loud, it should go over 70 dB and there we go, you see it turning red. So if you have a volume limit of say 100 decibels, you could set these to turn red when you cross 100 decibels. What I would recommend doing, and I'm stealing this a bit from Michael Lawrence, again, in a Rational Acoustics webinar, I'll leave a link to it down below because the guy is so thorough on these things, totally recommend watching these webinars. He has this traffic light system that he talks about, right? He usually does it with three colors, but we work with two. And basically what we have is from the left to the right, are increasing time windows. And we set our, uh, our warning threshold at like 70, for example. And you'll see that for the last five minutes, I've been talking above 70 decibels, right? But it's not quite gone over 70 on this 15 minute one because the average volume over the last 15 minutes has not been over 70 decibels. What Michael recommends you do is that you have these windows in sort of increasing lengths of time and as they turn red, you know that you are steering harder and harder into your limit, right? So if this was like, if we were trying to keep it under 70 decibels as an average over a show or over a certain time window, like 15 minutes or 30 minutes, what we would know is that as the windows from left to right get more and more red, we are closer to the point of no return, right? 
which is when our 30 minutes gets read, that means we've been above the line for the whole concert, basically, for the last half an hour. So setting it up this way can give you an early indicator that you've maybe been pushing it too hard for too long. Needless to say, you can also configure these to show things like uh, C weighted, Z weighted, B weighted. I have no idea what B and Z are really used for. Uh, but you can also do like peak, show you the actual peak, which is significantly higher. Uh, you know, if you were feeling cool, you could put that all the way at the left there. It'd be nice if you could drag and drop it, wouldn't it? That would, uh, that would be really nice. If uh, the creator of Open Sound Meter are watching this, that'd be nice functionality to have. You can do lots and lots of different stuff in this window, but I think the most useful one is the LAEQ measurement and setting it up in this traffic light system that Michael's done. Anyway, that was a long explanation, wasn't it? I hope that was helpful to you. I will leave a video up here where I talked about like how loud is too loud in concerts. I'll leave a link up here to tuning sound systems if that's something that you're interested in. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you use something like this to measure, if you've tried the traffic light systems before. We'd love to hear about it. Until next time, goodbye.